friends, we're in downtown Pisa, a city on the northwest side of Italy. And before we go to the Leaning Tower of Pisa tomorrow, ugh, Whoa. we're going to show you a side of Pisa that you might not have known much about. Now let's start the tour right over there. So the first stop of the day is this mind-blowing church, Santa Maria de la Spina. It was actually erected around 1230, which is like 800 years ago. As a first impression of Pisa in general is how it's so casually here. There's very few people staring at it. It's so ornately constructed, but then it's just people live right across the street. In the US, you would never have anything like that. So one piece of advice that I already have for anyone who's coming to visit Pisa is just how nice it is to walk along this river that's running straight through the city. It's the Arno River. And because Pisa has actually been built like around this port river, it's just so peaceful to walk along and see all these huge, like important buildings that are really colorful and really Italian looking. First impressions for me is that this place is truly beautiful. Like Wyatt said, it's very peaceful. The architecture is so unique, I feel like, with the triangular theme going on. And also there's such a mix of old and new, which I think is so cool. It's like they're together and mixed versus separate. Another cool perk of walking along the river is seeing cool buildings, just like this one behind me, the Torre Guelfa. It's so fascinating to see World War II's effects on Italy. Torre Guelfa was originally constructed in 1290, and then it was destroyed in 1944 by the bombings, and then later reconstructed to its former glory 30 years ago. Let's keep going. <laughs> so behind me I have the Italian flag and one thing that I always think is really fun to do with new flags is to look up what the different colors and designs represent. So for Italy, we just found out that green represents freedom, white represents purity and faith, and then red actually represents love. Before we get dinner, we're gonna pass by the Piazza Garibaldi and then walk through the street which doubles as a market, the Borgo Stretto. The Borgo Stretto is basically a long line of high-end boutiques and quaint cafes. So if you're interested in going shopping, having a nice cup of coffee, or just going on a nice stroll, this is the place for you. So early tomorrow, we're gonna hit a bunch of monuments, so we're gonna go to bed early, and that means street food. But what is the street food in Italy, you might ask? Pizza. Pizza, one euro fifty, really fluffy, good sauce, and it's my first pizza in Italy, so pretty good. Are your expectations met? I feel like they will be eventually, but since this is just street pizza, yeah. I'm not super impressed, but I have high hopes. I think I will be. Mm. Mm. It's so cool, you can just buy it on the side of the street. All right, so this is our sixth country together and currently Italy has not disappointed. See you guys tomorrow for more. And just like that is the next morning and we are next to the infamous Leaning Tower of Pisa. We're super excited to go up it and just, we're about to nerd out like crazy. So let's go. Ugh, fun fact. The tower is actually leaning because they didn't account for soft soil and it falls one millimeter every year, which will make my job of holding it up that much harder. We're climbing up the Tower of Pisa. <laughs> Everything is tilted. This is really trippy. And there's just a winding staircase. Look at this view. We made it to the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa and what a view. You basically can see all of Pisa and it is definitely tilted and the wind is blowing so 
We gotta be careful up here. <laughs> Alrighty, so we are on the side of the Leaning Tower of Pisa that is tilted, like standing over nothing basically. Thankfully they have these fences up. And actually to have your center of gravity, you have to like lean counter lean, like back to the right. So this is, that's straight right now. That's like straight up. And super fun fact, Galileo actually like had a super important discovery on the Leaning Tower of Pisa like hundreds of years ago. He was standing here, literally like right where we are right now, and he dropped a bunch of stuff off of the side of the Tower of Pisa, counting how long it took to reach the ground, and thereby he actually discovered that objects accelerate at the same rate. Alrighty, we are going up to the second level. Cool. Let's do this. So many steps. Fun fact, there's actually 251 total steps of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. I kind of like this. For those of you who have been following us for a while, you would know I have an extreme fear of heights. Whoa! We are at the very top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa and it is so windy. I just can't imagine how terrifying it would be without this fence here because these stairs just go like right off the edge. Oh, that is leaning, baby. <laughs> I got to hold on to my glasses because it's so windy. I'm scared they're going to fall off. Fun fact, the Leaning Tower of Pisa began construction in 1173 as a bell tower for the cathedral and it has seven bells all around the circumference of the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> so right next to that tower right there is this massive church that I feel like people don't often talk about when they're talking about Pisa just because the tower is so famous. But the church is the Santa Maria Assunta Church and it's honestly just magnificent in its own right. It's got this just marble facade with these, what are those, ironclad doors and it's just super impressive. It was built also a thousand years ago. It's also huge. And then over there you have the baptistry the dome, maybe we just transport over there really quick. So yeah, the baptistry is literally just this super ornate circular building that's actually used, or that was built for baptisms. So that building in and of itself, I think is the most impressive of all the ones here personally. So the cost of actually going inside the Leaning Tower of Pisa was 20 euros per person, and you can actually pay an extra seven euros to go inside of the baptistry and the cathedral, which we recommend doing. Sadly, we're not gonna be able to do that today because we have a bus to catch to, or train actually, to our next stop of Florence. But um, yeah. All right, so now we're just gonna give a few of our thoughts on Pisa as a whole. Definitely great for a day trip. We were able to visit everything we wanted to within a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. The architecture is so impressive and it's such a beautiful, beautiful city. I recommend. Yeah, and I think this has left us feeling like we really would like to live in Italy for a longer period of time eventually. This trip is gonna be a week and a half just for this one and we're gonna bounce around to a ton of cool cities, but like just staying here even for a night so far has really made us crave more, so. Definitely, the food. The architecture. The history. The language, like it's all so intriguing and awesome. All right, so this is where we're gonna end the video. Thank you so much for coming with us to Pisa. Also, stay tuned for our next video where we explore Florence. And if you're interested in following along with our journeys to 50 countries, make sure to subscribe. Bye, everybody. Bye. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is right behind him, but all he's focused on is that little lawnmower thingy. Can we talk about it? I'm on the edge, 
I'm bleeding tower pizza and I'm hanging on a moment with you.